I killed him. And I loved it so much. Hello and welcome to the show. Well, it's official. This year's kings and queens of the small screen have just been crowned with Emmy Awards going to Succession, The White Lotus and Ted Lasso. Our critic Deeptika Laurent is here to take us through those prizes. Hi Deepti. Hi Olivia. We're also going to take a look at the most expensive show ever to be made, The Rings of Power. But Deepti, let's start with those prizes, the 2022 Emmy Awards. Well, some surprises, quite a few repeat uh, repeat winners as well this year. The HBO drama, family drama Succession took award for best drama. Uh, for the second time, Olivia, the show's writer Jesse Armstrong picking up an Emmy for writing for best writing in a drama series. The other big winner of the night was HBO's The White Lotus. It's a sort of satirical show about uh, guests and employees at a resort chain. Uh, that show won Best Directing and Best Supporting Actress for a limit in a limited series for Jennifer Coolidge, who I think is one of the most uh, underrated actresses in television. I mean, if you can remember, you might remember her as Stifler's do, mom <laughs> in uh, American Pie, but she also had a very hilarious turn in Friends. Um, she's a genuine comedic actress and it's not easy to find them these days. Even her acceptance speech was hilarious. Take a look. You know, I took a lavender bath tonight and um, <laughs> right before the show and it made me swell up inside my dress. And uh, I'm having a hard time speaking. Um, but anyway, um, and thank you to my amazing uh, team. Wait, hold on. No, this is a once in a lifetime thing and I'm, I'm full, I'm full. Wait, 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 hold on, wait. Jacob Fenton, my, a UTA, and Jonathan Weinstein, and, and Tiffany Kuzon at, at, at Mosaic. And my sister is here tonight, and wait, hold on one thing. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> you know, Olivia, I think <laughs> she's actually genuinely quirky, and that's what makes her so funny. It's, it's not a sketch. No, you know? it's like adorable. It, it's really adorable. It's very endearing. So congratulations to her. Now, the other big winner of the night, of course, was the Netflix survival drama Squid Game. It was uh, the most watched show on Netflix, and it was neatly rewarded at the Emmys this year. It picked up six awards, including Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series and Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for Lee Jung Jae making he made history uh for uh, to become the first non-english speaking actor to pick up this award uh other winners of the night gene smart who won best actress for comedy uh, for a comedy series and zendaya uh, picking up best actress uh for drama for a drama series for her role as a uh, drug addict in the high school drama euphoria Ted Lasso, the very, very gentle soccer comedy uh, featuring... Not favourite, I know. Not my favourite. Once again, picking up pretty much every major award in the comedy category. I don't quite understand why the Emmys keep rewarding them. But anyway, um, I personally don't find it that funny anymore. And it was very much to the detriment of very good shows like Abbott Elementary or FX's Atlanta. Oh, yeah, that's uh, definitely a favourite of yours. And speaking of Atlanta, we're also saying goodbye to some of those Emmy Award winning shows this month. That's right. Uh, in fact, we are saying goodbye to Atlanta. Their uh, final season has just been released. It's a dark dramedy about a group of guys trying to make it in the rap industry in Atlanta with some biting commentary about being sure. black in America. Uh, Donald Glover it. plays Earn Marks, trying to manage his cousin Paperboy, who, hopes, uh, who he hopes will become a huge star. Uh, this final season was uh, actually delivered delayed due to the pandemic. Season three focused uh, on uh, Paperboy's successes in Europe. This final season sees the crew back in Atlanta reflecting on how much uh, they've changed. Okay, well, let's take a look at the final season of Atlanta. I watch Criminal Minds, and I know when someone's up to something twisted. Now, Olivia, the other show that's wrapping up is The Good Fight. It was um, one. Of, it's one of my favorite shows. It's a 
Uh, it was a formidable spin-off to The Good Wife, which saw Christine Baranski's character Diane Lockhart join a new uh, black like a law firm. In, it it sort of took stuff? place in, after the election of Donald Trump. For me, it was one of the sharpest uh, political, legal uh, hmm. uh, dramas in television. This final season, we'll see uh, some of the, uh, some familiar faces back, like Alan Cummings' excellent Eli Gold, but also newcomers. Uh, uh, this show, for me, was scandalously snubbed by the Emmys, despite acclaimed reviews and several nominations. The show's actually never won an award. In any case, in these times of shows being, uh, you know, cancelled on a whim, I think it speaks volumes that both Atlanta and The Good Fight are ending on their own terms. Mm, and remain hugely popular exactly. with viewers, yeah. So now to Amazon Prime's uh, prequel of the Lord of the Rings series, The Rings of Power is the name of that one. It came out this month and it cost an astronomical sum, almost $1 billion. That's right. It's the most expensive show in the history of television. The Rings of Power dropped on Amazon Prime uh, this month, costing around 700 million euros. But there are future seasons in the works, so it could well be uh, much, much more than that. This series, by its sheer budget, really changes the game as we enter a sort of hybrid uh, television world with movie-sized budgets. Uh, Catherine Kedia Clifford takes a look. Taking us back several thousand years before the likes of Bilbo and Frodo Baggins set foot on Middle-earth. The Rings of Power prequel is based on an appendix written by J.R.R. Tolkien and reimagined by Amazon's writing team. Your destiny. With a young, largely unknown cast, the streaming service hopes to entice a new generation to the world of Lord of the Rings at a time when fantasy is booming. It's kind of the gateway for new fans in that it is kind of the first chapter, the adolescence of Middle-earth, where the films you could imagine are the uh, adulthood of middle age. The series was filmed in unusual circumstances. It was an adventure for all of us, many, many years in the making, uh, COVID hitting us right in the middle, having to shut down, come back again, uh, being on New Zealand, uh, not able to leave, uh, and yet having to put one of the biggest shows ever made together. Costing 720 million euros, The Rings of Power is the most expensive TV show ever made, setting a precedent at a shaky time for the industry. As the cost of living rises and pre-lockdown life returns, subscriptions to streaming services are falling, with the main competitors pulling out the stops to survive. The Rings of Power is off to a good start drawing in a record 25 million viewers within a day of release. Though this TV critic says Amazon took a risk. A lot of Tolkien fans aren't too sure. A lot of people have pejoratively referred to it as fan fiction. So I think it's a big gamble for Amazon because that fan base isn't necessarily going to be drawn in by Rings of Power in the same way the MCU or Star Wars fan bases are drawn in by those franchises. Choose not the path of fear. It's a dangerous business, stepping into Middle-earth without Tolkien as guide. But whether or not it wins over die-hard fans, Rings of Power still looks set to shape the future of television, raising the stakes in budget and production beyond even movie status. With several seasons planned, Amazon's spending on the series is expected to exceed one billion. Well, that movie aspect you mentioned, Deep Sea, that cinematography does look gorgeous, and it was quite well received by the critics as well, right? That's right. It did receive some adoring reviews. It was also hit by um, controversy, Olivia. It was actually, uh, the show was review bombed by some people who are unhappy about the diversity of the cast. They argued that Middle Earth was always meant to be white mm. in uh, Tolkien's books. Uh, Ismail Cruz Cordova, who plays the Sylvan elf Arondir, received, even received some hate speech. Uh, Amazon was even, uh, had to suspend its ratings uh, for a while there. Uh, the cast Cast of the Lord of the Rings movie issued a message on uh, Twitter saying that they stand in solidarity against relentless racism, threats, harassment, and abuse. And, and they said that the Tolkien world was, by definition, multicultural and one in which diverse people uh, joined together to defeat the forces of evil. So definitely doing a lot to quash uh, those uh, very um, unjustified criticism. Mm, certainly seem to be strange complaints in the fantasy world. Indeed. Now, finally, season five of something that's not fantasy but feels a bit like reality. Yeah. <laughs> Our favourite dystopian uh, drama, The Handmaid's Tale, is out this month and it's looking to be a pretty riveting season. That's right. Handmaid's Tale depicts life in Gilead, a totalitarian, patriarchal 
society that take away women's rights and treat them as reproductive machines, which sounds a, a little bit scarily too familiar. Uh, season four ended with a shocking twist of uh, the Handmaid's Revolt. Elizabeth Moss's character June and her army of handmaids brutally murdered Gilead's commander, Fred Waterford. Uh, this season will follow June's reckoning with that bloody killing. It will also bring her in direct conflict with Serena, who was uh, who's Waterford's widow, who may just be as dangerous a nemesis as her uh, as her husband. Now, it's uh, the Handmaid's Tale is adapted from Margaret Atwood's book of the same name. The Hand Handmaid's Tale has been a darling, a past darling of the Emmys. Not so much last year. It posted a, a very negative record, Olivia. It posted the most losses of any series going empty-handed despite 21 nominations. Anyhow, uh, the, they've just announced a sixth and what will be a uh, final season of The Handmaid's Tale. Okay, once again, a case of uncrowned at the award ceremonies, but uh, still extremely popular among its many, many, many fans. Deepti, thank you so much for that roundup this week. We'll leave you with a glimpse of season five of The Handmaid's Tale. That's out on Hulu this month. Otherwise, remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website. We're on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. I'm not going to be looking for somebody going back into Gilead. I'm going. I'm going with you. If you're not careful, she will pull you down with her. I pray for our children. May they live a life without all of this hate. Dear God, may they do better than we did. They observe, they contact us, they report, film, photograph. They are the voice of the voiceless, your eyes in the far-flung reaches of the world. The Observers, a network of 5,000 committed citizens working with France 24. One of our observers in Côte d'Ivoire, Gaspar. Amateur footage and testimonials checked by our journalists and broadcast weekly on The Observers on France24 and observers.france24.com.